25 years after India's independence, is it now time to rewrite India's history through India's lens? The Indian Council of Historical Research certainly thinks so, and it has launched a project to do exactly that. Now, what does rewriting history mean? Can you even do that? Yes, says the ICHR, because it is going to use sources available in vernacular languages and scripts with an aim to give due credit to dynasties who have been missed out. For example, the Ahom dynasty that ruled Assam for as long as 600 years or even the Marathas. ICHR member Umesh Kadam has spoken exclusively to Time Network Samia on what he says is the need to emerge from the colonial Eurocentric view of Indian history. But the question is, is this a political move? Is this Indianization or is this saffronization? That debate is coming up in just a bit, but for hear what Mr. Kadam has to say. ICHR being the apex body of Indian history under government of India looks forward to write, rewrite the history of India and try to understand the grey areas. First we want to uh, know, get ourselves out of that kind of an Eurocentric colonial history which has been representing India and that we can see how it has created huge problems for our younger generation which is there between the 8th standard to 12th standard and what kind of history text is been written and how you know major dynasties of history of, of India I can give you an example of the Ahom dynasty uh, Ahom dynasty they ruled India uh, they ruled Assam, that is northeast, and across beyond northeast for more than 600 years. That is from the 12th century to 18th century. Okay, a huge span of 600 years. And the Mughals ruling India, uh, the Mughal India, which was then known as Hindustan, they were not ruling whole of India. Okay, they were ruling only a part which was they knew as Hindustan. The Deccan was completely different, and the Dakshinapath was completely different, and they did not even penetrate into the northeast. Mm -hmm. And their history of 180 years has become the major chunk of Medieval Indian history. Again, Medieval Indian history representation is from the 14th to the 18th century. When the major part has to be the 8th century to the 14th century, wherein the major dynasties, Indian dynasties within Deccan, when Deccan was the world, is not a representation of India. So, but can history be rewritten is my question to you because just like I was talking to you a short while back, you said that it is absolutely based on facts and truth yeah. and there's nothing beyond that. If there is a set history that India and generation on knows about, can history be rewritten, sir? Do you think there are certain areas of concern that wasn't really included, were there anomalies, were the parts that were omitted as per uh, your understanding? Is that the reason why that compelled you to come up with this uh, sort of a project? Nobody has compelled ICHR to do this work. It is ICHR who has taken up this project. And why ICHR has taken up this project, I am saying it again, that we want to get out of this colonial Eurocentric kind of understanding of Indian history. That is a set agenda which we have gone through for last 65 years. And you can see what has it done to India that it has not seen India through a geocultural kind of an understanding. It has understood India through a geopolitical kind of an vision. So we don't have to go with a geopolitical kind of India where we will see states different from each other, where it will reap separatist tendencies rather than we would like to see Indian history through a geocultural perspective where we will see that the diversity in India is inculcating the uni unity of India and it is harmonizing that sing singular culture of India is harmonizing each other with each other. The second thing is that why will we understand Indian history through European sources? or through translated versions of European scholars. Indian history should be understood within vernacular sources. When are we going to hear the voices of the people which are being represented through their languages? Is not that history? Are, are we going to see the history which has been written from ivory towers? Absolutely. That is the reason, that is the reason I am saying that history, literature, culture which is a continuous representation within the languages of the people within the contemporary period when we have forgotten our own languages there are so many different kinds of tribes there are so many different kind of people speaking different languages within the ancient India within medieval India within modern India and all whatever versions of history they have created that is the history of the hoi poloes that history their culture 
विच कम्स इन टू दी मेन स्ट्रीम ऑफ इंडियन हिस्ट्री शुड बी री रिटर्न एंड दैट इज वाई अ कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव हिस्ट्री विद सच काइंड ऑफ एन यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ वर्नैकुलर सोर्सेज इज द नीड ऑफ द आवर so but you know uh, we have been trying to get uh, inputs and reactions from several sectors within the society and there is a left lobby that feels that this is a bit saffronize indian history how do you see this reaction coming from them sir if we are going to write indian history with the help of vernacular sources does it mean saffronization or does it mean writing the pride of india by representing india through its own languages huh if that is the case uh the, if you go to any european country uh, go through their history textbooks they are teaching pride of their own country go to american uh, universities they are teaching their pride of america rather than they are they are not talking americans are not talking about four or five different kinds of civilizations which were there they are only writing history which is after the american war of independence Huh? in india why is it that when we are having diverse kind of people why we are not going to appreciate their contributions and the significance of each and every person the north eastern history has not been figured out in one whole chapter anywhere in the textbooks of indian history huh? why does a student in india right over there in kerala will not feel that north east i also belong to north east why is he not going to have that kind of a sentiment if he will have that kind of a sentiment only if we are going to represent the pride of indian history rather than telling the world how many times we failed and how many battles we failed it is better to tell how many battles we won how many things we contributed how our indian dynasties uh, were not uh, you know dynasties which were autocratic rulers rather they were empowering people they were they were giving patronage to its subjects at all levels that our temples were not only sacred places that our temples catered to uh, people as granaries as banks that our uh, you know harbors were in touch Uh, but sir, uh, the the political party have were also quick to react to this entire move, uh, this new project of ICHR, and they said that this entire project in itself is a political move on the part of the government to decide to rewrite history. They are even calling it to be a case of misplaced priority, and a tweaking and distortion of history is not going to be history re- re- rewritten. How do you see this, sir? As a student of history and a teacher of history. i have been seeing how history is been taught i am a professor in jnu for last 10 years and i am here on deputation and it's in jnu that for the first time when i joined in 2013 that the history of deccan a significant history of deccan a huge component was not been taught in the best university in the best department of the country hmm? 17th and 18th century history of india is nothing but the history of the marathas right from atak to katak you can see that marathas were the only people who were controlling the whole subcontinent eh? if you go through all the flags of all the dynasties across india right from ancient times to modern times till 1947 and if you see Uh, the titles of the kings which have been taken and if you see that all the rishis and munis of buddhism jainism and the sanatan and vaidik what have they worn what are the flag colors it are saffron colors even our dry color is having a saffron color hmm? why should we say that we are saffronizing india but do you think this is a political move or do you dismiss this i dismiss i i very much dismiss that it is not a political move it is an academic work now now it is important to understand what exactly is the ichr and what its charter is is this an overreach by them well the indian council of historical research is an autonomous body under the ministry of education amongst its top two aims and objectives on its website are a to foster objective and scientific writing of history such as to inca- uh, in- uh, inculcate an informed appreciation of the country's national and cultural heritage so that's the charter number 1 and charter number 2 is to review the progress of historical research from time to time and indicate neglected or new areas where research needs to be specially promoted so essentially the ichr is saying this is our mandate and this is what we are doing now upon the ichr's decision to rewrite indian history
Congress leader Supriya Shinak has called this a futile exercise by the central government. She's adding that it won't solve problems like unemployment and women's safety. Let's listen in to all the political reactions that have come into the story. Just to no avail. This is not going to create the jobs. This is not going to rein in the prices. This is not going to make women more secure. This is not going to guarantee jobs. This is not going to increase people's incomes. This is only and only done to distract people. अगर आपके हिसाब से पुराने इतिहासकारों ने सरकार के दबाव में कुछ ले देकर इतिहास लिखा है तो ये कैसे मान लिया जाए कि जो आज आप इतिहास लिखवाएंगे ये इतिहासकार आपके दबाव में नहीं है धीरे धीरे तैयारी ये भी हो रही है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी ये चाहती है कि भारत का संविधान भी लिखा जाए नए तरीके से और नए संविधान की तरफ भी उनके बढ़ते हुए कदमों में से पहला कदम है इतिहास कभी भी बदला नहीं जा सकता इतिहास इतिहास होता है इतिहास में वर्णित जो तथ्य होते हैं वो ऐतिहासिक होता है उसको अगर बदलने की बात हो रही कहीं न कहीं इतिहास को बदलने की बात का मतलब है कि वो जो पूरा सिस्टम है उस पर हमला करना चाहते हैं और अपने माध्यम से इतिहास को गढ़ करके अपने अनुसार जो वर्णित या लिखित रूप में लाना चाहते हैं इस तरह की बातें देश के संविधान में कहीं भी उचित नहीं है now, controversies over historical figures and the telling of Indian history are not new. You know that if you watch the news. Tipu Sultan's birth anniversary, for example, was observed on Sunday. That brought his contested legacy to the forefront of political discourse once again. While leaders from AIAMIM, Congress and CPI celebrated Tipu Sultan, calling him India's first freedom fighter, the BJP and other organizations on the right have long called the 17th century ruler of Mysore a religious bigot who was anti-Hindu and anti-Kannada. The other contested portrayal is that of the Mughals and whether that has got disproportionate attention. As Umesh Kadam, and you just heard him said, the Ahom dynasty ruled India for nearly 600 years, while the Mughals were here for only 180 years. The view on Aurangzeb was specially controversial. He was often described as a ruthless tyrant who was an expansion imposed tough Sharia laws and brought back the discriminatory jazia tax that Hindu residents had to pay in return for protection. Other historians have deferred and pointed to the number of grants for maintaining Hindu temples given by Aurangzeb. In May this year, Akbaruddin OAC, leader of the AIMIM, paid his respects at the tomb of Aurangzeb at Kuldabad, that is near Aurangabad, where the Shiva Sena and Maharashtra's Navanirman Sena cried foul. Another historical debate has focused around the legacy of the Maratha Empire, the warrior hero Chhatrapati Shivaji. In response to the chaos and misrule that prevailed in the Deccan in the late 17th century, now its leaders contended with the Mughal Empire and contributed to its downfall. But the historical narrative has been that the British rescued India from chaos. As Umesh Kadam points out, we see the 17th and the 18th centuries as the downfall and decline of Mughals and the expansion of British rule in India. However, these centuries were actually, according to him, all about the Marathas to whom not enough chapters are dedicated in our history books. Let me go across to two historians who are joining us on the debate this evening. Uh, thank you very much, Irfan Habib, for joining us. You're a historian. And Uday Mahukar is an author. He's joining us on the broadcast as well. Mr. Habib, I'll come to you first. The writing of history is a continuous process. We all know this. There are new yep. sources, there are new facts that come to light, and therefore your history is constantly updated. Yeah. ICMR, I, I, you know, ICHR is saying, the Indian Council of Historical Research is saying, A, this is our mandate, right? And B, the fact is that we do not anymore want to see our history through the lens of the colonial rule, given the fact that most of our history was written by the British or before them the Mughals, we want to see them through, see our history through the eyes of Indians. What is the harm in that if the writing of history in any case is a continuous process? You see, I, I disagree with the basic premise of uh, Mr. Kadam. You know, he, he begins by saying that he, that he wants to disconnect with the, with the Eurocentric history. We disconnected with Eurocentric history more than 50, 60 years ago. And there is a continuous process of writing history 
there are so many schools of historiography and which have which have written history over the years so it's not that we are actually still uh, following what vincent smith wrote or what we inherited from e and dawson or what uh, so many british historians left behind we have all gone beyond that now there are lots of uh, gaps which can be filled of course no doubt about it no there are lots of uh, b b b parts of northeast india have not been truly uh, properly represented which should be uh, done uh, that nobody can deny that or question that but to say that this attempt by, by, by ICHR is a is a is a challenge to eurocentric history there is no eurocentric history in this country today hmm. we are we are uh, we belong to different schools of indian national historiographies now which are not eurocentric no we, we broadly you can have right left centrist whatever but we are all indian and we have all our own perspective at looking for looking at the past and this is going on for the last several years and these disagreements and and coming together on different points you know that has been happening but this whole idea that this is an attempt to another thing the claim is being made that 14 volumes will be produced in 3 years i don't know which serious school of historiography can produce uh, 14 volumes in 3 years no that that is something so questionable well, what are you doing how can you produce 14 volumes in 3 years how will you rewrite whatever i question this whole okay. idea so of mr rewriting. irfan habib essentially let me let me just understand yeah. this simply the argument you are making is that in any case we as historians are not looking at indian okay. history from a eurocentric lens or a colonial lens uh, in the last not, yeah. 75 years there have been independent indian historians who have Absolutely. done their research who have written books and all contributed to the evolution of indian history that we read in our books before i yeah, get yeah. in uday ji let me ask you this question as well the yeah. fact is uh, that if we read our school books or even if we you know i i did history in graduation and the impression i don't remember much of it but the impression that one comes away with even today is that we learned more about the moghals than we learned about the marathas that's absolutely true that it seemed that the history of india was only the history of north india we never learned about the history of the north east or the history of yeah, the yeah, western yeah. part I'm, of this country I'm, I'm, it was see, almost I'm, like it's only north india that existed and see, nothing marathas. else did so that, that is, needs to be corrected and yeah, therefore I, I, why I, question I, the move no this is just I, the indianization of history began, not the saffronization i began by saying that that there are there are lots of gaps and so many people have said it northeast is uh, not properly represented large parts of deccan are not represented marathas actually are represented there are lots of books on marathas correct i, I don't i don't agree with this claim there are lots of uh, lots of books which talk about marathas and their contribution or their their struggle with the with the with the with the with the bogals so there are lots of books so there is no question about that the point is there are lots of books on shivaji so so and we talk about shivaji all the time and he is one of the the, the top maratha leader and his role is discussed repeatedly in so many books even books which are written on on bogals talk about shivaji and his contribution and struggle against okay. the uh, against the bogals okay. so so he figure in history again and again okay the point is this whole idea of doing geo cultural history not geo political history i don't understand understand what the, what does this mean what do you mean by geo cultural no india is a multi multicultural country with diversity so whose culture is going to be represented in this geo cultural uh, perspective and geo political cannot be dissociated with geo cultural i think i'll let no. uh, uday these are I, I think we we'll let Uday be... Mahorkar ji, you know, speak on that. What I, I, exactly? Irfan Habib is pointing out to a question that even I would have wanted to ask. Uh, Uday ji, it almost comes across like the attempt by the government of India is not to rewrite history via an Indian lens or the Indianization of Indian history, but simply a saffronization of it. that you you know glorify the hindu rulers and you let mughal rulers and mughal history just disappear somewhere that that essentially is the agenda uh, 
No, no, no. This is, you see, the history we have been taught so far. You see, nothing is in black and white. There are many gray areas, but on the whole, if you see, the history which we have been taught so far has been certainly <coughs> the one which is influenced by colonial mindset. More than that, Umesh Kadam, Professor Umesh Kadam spoke about colonial and Europe, uh, Eurocentric history. I am talking about the leftist imprint. Mm. There is an imprint of pan-Islamists also in the kind of history which you have been taught. So this is a process which was long overdue. This is the process of correction of history. In Mughals also, there is nothing, nothing in black and white. Akbar, I personally believe, Akbar has to be given his place in Indian history. But you can't glorify, uh, glorify uh, uh, Aurangzeb on the basis of a few pieces of evidence, you know. And, and you see, this correction of history is a long overdue process which, is now, which has now started. And I think it is justified in more than one way. Let us take Shivaji's place. Are we, as, as a nation, are we not supposed to know as to uh, what was Shivaji and what was his contribution? For example, I am, I, I am, I'll be writing a new book on Shivaji uh, 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 very shortly. So I have done a lot of research and I may share a few things with you. When, when Shivaji passed away in 1680, he was not a king. He was almost an emperor. The length of his kingdom was 1600 kilometers. It started from South Gujarat, went through Maharashtra, Karnataka, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh and ended 200 kilometers beyond Chennai. Now the distance between Kabul and Delhi as of today is 1350 kilometers. Ghur from where Muhammad Ghuri came and enslaved India, the distance of Ghur from Delhi is 1525 kilometers. You can map. So, we don't know, I mean, this, I mean, and she's the, the, the kind of imprint which Shivaji has left. Within 40 years of his death, Maratha armies had reached Delhi. In the next 30 years, which is by 1750, hmm. Maratha were the ones who were ruling over India, you know, by sitting in Delhi. The Mughal Empire sure. used to follow sure. what Marathas told them. And in 1758, Marathas captured Peshawar. The, the, the nation doesn't know. Marathas captured Peshawar uh, for only six months. But, you know, the very fact that Maratha armies reached Peshawar, nobody knows. Why the nation should not know about these facts of so history? So you are saying... The contribution of Madhara Peshawar. Saying, okay. You are saying that Bhaji there was Sindhya, a left lobby. Nobody knows. Uh, uh, let me just... Let me just quickly encapsulate and when it comes, you your know, entire I argument fully and agree, then let me ask I fully you the next question. With that any uh, attempt to Udayji, essentially a, a, what you are trying to tell me Akbar is that there was a left imprint on India's historical landscape. Udayji, just a minute. Udayji, just a minute. What you are essentially trying to tell me is and trying to tell our viewers is this. You are saying for the longest time there has been a left imprint on India's historical landscape, uh, people who were professors, people who were writing books, people who were teaching in universities and schools were all left-leaning and therefore you got a certain interpretation of history where you had Hindu rulers like the Aham ruler, rulers of the Northeast or Shivaji, etc. sidelined and the people who were glorified were the Mughals. But the fact is, and this is, I think this is the concern here, when that whole question about Indianization or saffronization comes in, uh, the worry is and the fear amongst the academicians is that the process, sure, of course you need to tell the stories, the glorious stories of our Indian he heroes, whether they are Hindu, whether they are Muslim, whether very importantly they are Dalit. Uh, but that is not what the right wing is talking about. That is not what, what Professor Kadam has spoken about. He's just spoken about Aham ro rulers. He's just spoken about, uh, you know, uh, Shivaji. Uh, th th you know, there is a glorious history of Dalits in this country, the way they have contributed to our freedom struggle, etc. A, uh, will that be the focus? B, will, will that, uh, that is get some focus and B, will this end up demonizing Muslim rulers in this country? Look, history, whether you like it or not, cannot be changed. And if it's changed, it's fiction.
Look at the controversy over Tipu, no, for no, example. See, Look at the controversy over Aurangzeb. Will entire, this new history end up demonizing these people who, you know, had their good and bad, like all Hindu and Muslim rulers? No, no. You see, it, the, the record is very clear. There was a conscious attempt to present doctored history, history which was not in tune with what had actually happened. And let us take the Sultanate period. Sultanate period starts from uh, uh, Kutubuddin Aibak and ends uh, uh, from uh, Iltutmish and Kutubuddin Aibak and ends by, uh, with uh, Ibrahim Lodi. There is not a single ruler who was uh, good to Hindus. Not a single ruler. Now, if Akbar comes, after that Akbar came, and Akbar did try to bring the two communities together. He, he, he called a stop to temple destruction. He withdrew Zizia tax. So we, we should have a place for Akbar. I am not in tune with people who want to demonize Akbar. But then you can't sell villains as heroes. That is my point. Ibrahim Khan Gardi, he was the okay. artillery, uh, artillery in charge of Marathas in the battle, third battle of Panipat. And he was offered mountains of gold by Emma Shah Abdali to switch over. He did not switch over and he was captured and killed with horrid cruelty by Emma Shah Abdali. Because he, 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 he remained loyal to the Marathas. So, Ibrahim Khan Gardi is a hero for us. Similarly, Shah Alam too. Irfan so, Habib, this see, is not about Hindus and Muslims. What I am saying Muslims. is that if, if the fear is that this entire exercise is is a, I, is a, heroes as heroes... Okay, problem I, I understand that. My, my so problem Ifan is... Habib, I have exactly 10 seconds. I want you to keep your answer short. I just... Hear me out, hear me out. Uh, what Udeji is saying this. is that this is not a Hindu-Muslim project. Uh, that is, what we have studied so far to a large extent is doctored, has been doctored, and now is the time to correct that doctored version. No, no. You cannot glorify villains as heroes. That is the argument he is making. Go ahead. T 20 seconds, sir. That is... That is, that is a bogus argument at all, totally. Nobody has glorified villains. Aurangzeb has his place. People have, pe people have critiqued Aurangzeb. People have critiqued so many b b other rulers who have done, uh, b not done, b b b who have been uh, b b like uh, b b cruel. And they were all cruel. Actually, what, I, what are we doing today? We are trying to look for, for heroes in, in medieval or ancient past. No, you can do that. And you cannot do go by by religion. You, know, you say that there is no Hindu Muslim. That's what that's what is happening. No, we are trying to create heroes in in medieval uh, India or in ancient India. Mm -hmm. These people will come with their weaknesses of the period, their strengths. So we cannot re actually see uh, heroes in our in our uh, in our history that way. No, history is to be understood, to be written, and lessons to be learned. Lots of things to be forgotten. Lots of things to be retrieved mm. and carried forward. So this is this is how history should be understood. We cannot actually demonize some people okay. and make heroes of some out of some. So this is history should not be a project to do all this. You know why should we do it? And and we have so okay. much else to do. Okay. So ICHR uh, says. Uh, yeah, ICHR says this is our mandate. Let me add something. ICHR here. is what saying mandate? this is now, our mandate. Samba, they Samba, have given Chandra themselves. Sambaji, the son of Shivaji. See what what Mr. Mahorkar just said about Shivaji. So we have all read it. We have read it. Uh -huh. we, I, I, at least I know all about all that. This is not something which is not familiar to people. Not enough. About Irfan, Shivaji. No, Irfan Habib. No, Irfan Habib. I, I'll 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 give give Udayji this much that we know more about the Mughals than we know about the Marathas. Let's let's be clear and frank and honest about that. But this is this has been an enlightening discussion. This has been an interesting discussion, hearing from both of you, hearing from both sides. ICHR says, this is our mandate. Uh, give us a chance. They have given themselves four years to write, and they have deployed some hundred historians to write uh, 14 volumes of Indian history. How they will achieve that feat, I do not know. Uh, but the fact is, Irfan Habib, I will say this much. If the ICHR doesn't do a good job of rewriting Indian history, they themselves will be discredited. So it's their yeah, reputation yeah, yeah. online there, as well. There, so let's just wait and see what they yeah. come up with. Uh, Surely. It, it's the...
it's their project, it's their reputation it's their project, yeah, yeah. Uh, online. Yeah, yeah. So if they do a dishonest job of it, if they do a colored job of it, I mean, uh, you know, as I say, there are enough historians, independent historians in this country who will point out to that. Is that something that they will risk? We'll just wait and see if they do a shoddy job of it or they do a good job of it. For the moment, they are doing it. Uh, I guess let them do it. We'll leave it there for the moment. Irfan Habib, good to speak to you. And Uday Mahorkarji, good to speak to you as well. Thank you very much. On that note, I'm slipping to a quick break.